There's nothing simpler than avoiding people you don't like. Avoiding one's friends, that's the real test. Oh, do you think I might have a drink? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were a waiter. Well, I shall pretend it. I told her to take him. Your quarrel is with my daughter Rosamond, not me. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. There's nothing to do at the house, except when we entertain. Well, there must be something you can put your mind to. Like what? Gardening? Well, no, you can't be as desperate as that. Then what? Edith, dear, you're a woman with a brain and reasonable ability. Stop whining and find something to do. I have been talking to Cora. Now, that is a mistake. You can't expect me to avoid talking to my own wife. Why not? I know several couples who are perfectly happy, haven't spoken in years. I'm not a romantic. I should hope not. But even I will concede that the heart does not exist solely for the purpose of pumping blood. That is charming, especially from you. Really, Granny, how can you say that I'm too worldly, but Sybil's not worldly enough? You cannot be so contrary. I'm a woman, Mary. I can be as contrary as I choose. I don't dislike him. I just don't like him, which is quite different. Is anyone coming? It seems a pity to miss such a good pudding. Oh, hello, Edith, dear. Hello, Granny. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? At my age, one must ration one's excitement. <laughs> what should we call each other? Well, we could always start with Mrs. Crawley and Lady Grantham. Don't be silly. This won't make any difference to all that. She won't want to get involved. When you talk like that, I'm tempted to ring for Nanny and have you put to bed with no supper. Oh, what on earth's the matter? I'm leaving in the morning, Lady Grantham. I doubt we'll meet again. Do you promise? Sorry about the vase. Oh, don't be, don't be. It was a wedding present from a frightful aunt. I have hated it for half a century. I'm so looking forward to seeing your mother again. When I'm with her, I'm reminded of the virtues of the English. But isn't she American? Exactly. How about some house parties? She's been asked to one next month by Lady Anne McNair. Oh, it's a terrible idea. She doesn't know anyone under a hundred. I might send her over to visit my aunt. She could get to know New York. Oh, I don't think things are quite that desperate. I really think you should go to bed. No bride wants to look tired at her wedding. It either means she's anxious or been up to no good. <sighs> I won't sleep a wink. Tonight or tomorrow? Sybil vulgarity is no substitute for wit. Well, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed you should come to say goodbye, Mama. Why do you always talk of me as if I were a salmon who laid my eggs in the gravel and then swam back to the sea? <laughs> Would happen to a foreigner. It's typical. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. No Englishman would dream of dying in someone else's house. Question is, what do I say to Cousin Violet? Oh, don't worry about that. I can handle her. Really? Well, if you can, you must have learned to very recently. We'd better go in without her, or it's not fair on Mrs. Patmore. Oh, is her cooking so precisely timed? You couldn't tell. I was only going to say that Sybil is entitled to her opinions. No, she isn't until she is married. Then her husband will tell her what her opinions are. Oh, cranny. Well, I'm going up to London to stay with Rosman for a day or two. I think we'll have Lavinia for tea. You sound as if you're going to gobble her up. <laughs> if only we could. <laughs> oh, really. It's like living in a second-rate hotel where the guests keep arriving and no-one seems to leave. <laughs>